Hey, what's up, everybody? It's DJ Fanatic Beats, content contributor for LiveOffBeats.com. Uh, today's video basically is going over uh, making chops in Edison or just basically making audio segments within a loop. Uh, we're going to use a drum loop for the example. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, you can always follow me on Twitter at DJ Fanatic or Instagram uh, at DJ Fanatic Beats. Uh, Fanatic is spelled with a PH. Uh, so let's jump right in. This is actually very useful for those that like to chop samples. Um, you know, producers that lean towards sample uh, production or you know you have like drum loops and you want to kind of chop them up and use specific sounds in the drum loop so um, to use Edison this is FL Studio 20 um, you can always go to any sound that you put in any audio or whatever and you select the sound and this is actually a, a simple straightforward drum loop this is the call the fruity wrapper so once you're in here you want to right click here and hit edit and when you hit edit you notice this huge um, waveforms shows you exactly what the loop is or whatever this is Edison notice right here Edison uh, master um, so this is a basic drum loop here and you got you know you can kind of visualize it kick snare looks like a hi-hat hi-hat and there's a bunch of things you can do in here I don't want to confuse you I'm just going to show you two cool things that you can do in Edison definitely the chop feature it's an auto chop where it detects transients. Transients is basically the initial beginning of the sound, right at the beginning. We can zoom all the way in here. See right here, that's a transient where that sound begins. So this is your entire loop. I'll hit play. You can hit play within Edison. pretty straightforward loop and what you can do actually notice it's not all the way uh, as loud as it can be or normalized so before I show you the chop feature you can inside Edison you can normalize it basically is this button right here notice when I hover over it in the hint panel in the upper left it'll tell you normalize normalize regions we don't have any regions selected because you can always select a specific region but what we're going to do is actually normalize the entire drum loop. So you hit that button. Notice how all the wavelengths reached out. Uh, basically, they're normalized now. It should sound a lot fuller and without distortion. So check it out. And you can do that with any sound. It doesn't have to be just drum loops. It can be a sample loop that was really low or, you know, just had poor audio quality you can normalize it uh, and always listen after you normalize it to make sure it sounds good without you know any type of artificial sound especially if it's like a really old sample or something so let me show you the feature that I'm referring to that I'm sure all of you are gonna love especially sample based producers um, in Edison what you can do is a little option right where is it right here Notice when I hover over it, look at your hint panel in the upper left, and that goes with anything in FL Studio. There's so many different things in this program that you can do. Always like look up in the hint panel and you can kind of discover new stuff. But medium audio slicing slash auto slicing. So by cl clicking on that button alone would detect every transient um, based on a medium setting. If you right click on it, it gives you some options. You have dull auto slicing, which is a dull sensitivity. It's like very subtle. Medium, I usually just keep it as default, which is the medium audio auto slicing. And you have sharp auto slicing, where it detects everything. And then you have some other options. Small grid is based on the, the tempo and the grid of that loop or the sample. And you have medium grid slicing and large grid slicing. So. Uh, usually these top three are the ones that you choose. Medium usually does a trick, especially with drums. Uh, sharp auto slicing is probably for something that's very intricate. We have tons of different sounds. Um, or like you have a bunch of transients and you want to detect everything. Uh, you kind of play around with these based on whatever audio that you're, you're slicing. So uh, and small grid 
um, basically is a grid based on a given time frame or whatever, uh, a given uh, space. From, like, for instance, it, let's select that. No, because I don't want to have to undo everything. Anyway, let's select it. Notice it's base. It doesn't even care where transients are. It's just a grid. It makes all these slice points. Let me zoom in. Marker, marker, marker. And then, you know, numbers the markers in a sequential order. And these grids are all equal. My bad. I actually hit a shortcut that I forgot that you can do within here. And it got really confusing how to turn it off or go back to these wavelengths. Basically, there's a keyboard shortcut if you hit. Not that button. There we go. If you hit S, let me stop the sounds here. Let me stop the sound. If you hit S, it'll show a color graph based on the frequencies. You don't. I mean, that's advanced stuff or whatever. You don't have to really worry about that. You can use it. It's just a different way of visualizing the waveforms. I tend to keep with the standard uh, waveform here. Let me uh, normalize that again. So, um, if you ever hit S on accident, this is how you can change the view of the drum loop or whatever sounds that you have in Edison. Hit S again, it goes back. And notice uh, these are different ways that you can uh, change it. So you can, I don't want to get too con, uh, complex in this video. So anyway, back to the chopping, you left click on this button right here and it automatically detect every transient. So you hit that button. Notice I'll zoom in here. Notice every transient mostly. Uh, there's marker one, there's marker two, there's marker three, there's marker four, there's marker five, marker six, etc. And it detects them based on the initial transient of every sound. Some more complex uh, drum loops or samples, you'll have to kind of like zoom in and make sure it starts right at the transient um, initiation where the sound starts. And you can kind of move them, um, left click and just drag it a little bit, and you can move them based on where you want them to start. So you can always check that like that. And what's cool about this, um, once you have markers like this, you can play each drum um, separately. So let's, for instance, double click on the marker, and notice it selects this region, and you hit play. And it's just the kick. And notice I have it on the loop um, loop option engage there. And let's say we want just marker two played. We got the hi hat there, and I believe this is the snare. Sorry, that's the other kick. Here's the snare. So you get the idea. And even further, uh, let's make this a little smaller if we can. There we go. This is pretty large. There we go. And before um, FL Studio couldn't do that, these were fixed. Now they're vector files, so you can make it as large as you want. So you can compare it, you know, look at some other information that you want, part of your project. So what's cool about this, I can actually take that one snare, this, and use uh, what's called, uh, you can, let's see here. You can send um, to playlist as an audio clip, or you can just drag it to another sound. So let me ch give it a test run. Drag, copy, sample, selection. And this is selected, the snare. So you should be able, there we go, drag it to the playlist, or you can just, you know, make a new sound or whatever. But I usually just drag it to the playlist, and it's an audio file. And when you go here, notice there's another, see that? That's the same snare we just made, which is awesome. So you can take bits and pieces out of whatever percussion that you find at a drum loops or whatever. Let's say you just wanted that snare, and you can use that snare. So let's go back to Edison. Remember, right click, edit, and Edison opens up. And... The chops actually go away. So what you can do is just chop it again on a medium set, and you know you can always check it again if you want. And let me show this other option: send playlists um, as audio. 
Send to Playlist as Audio Clip. We'll select that. And notice that same chop, I mean, same drum loop is there, but with markers. So we sent the whole clip to the playlist. So you can also, let me go here, right click, excuse me, open up the Fruity Wrapper. That's our snare, we don't want that. Right click, edit, open Edison. Um, you know, you can hit the uh, medium audio auto slicing and you can always select specific regions that you want to just send to the um, playlist as an audio clip. I don't know what this is. What is this? Okay, it's the kick. So select send to playlist as audio clip. Now, instead of dragging it, um, here it is right here. It just sent that one kick. See? Right here in track three, it sent that one kick to your playlist. And then, of course, you can rearrange it and actually just come up with your own um, specific drum pattern or whatever and just to remind you guys and gals shout out to my female producers I know y'all out there um, you can also um, use this for any sound it doesn't have to be just drums it doesn't have to be you know a synth it can be like any type of sample a vocal sample or any type of um, sound that you put in here it's a very powerful tool you spend time with it you can learn a lot just experimenting with that quick auto slicing feature and then you can rearrange it in any creative way that you want and that's just a really simple feature but it can be very complex when you spend time with it and explore with it and, and make your own musical ideas out of it it's very powerful and you know, using it through the years myself, I was able to do a lot of complex things just in this little, in Edison alone. So it's great for drums, it's great for samples, and you know, you should really consider it, you know, when you're working on your music, and that way you can just take your music to another level. So, you know, put time into it, just like anything, and the better you'll get. So again, it's been DJ Fanatic Beats, content contributor for liveoffbeats.com. You can follow me on Twitter at DJ Fanatic or on Instagram at DJ Fanatic Beats and Fanatics with a PH. So hopefully you learned something and uh, hopefully, you know, you can experiment with this. And before you know it, you'll be flying, you know, faster, making beats quicker and just kind of just doing different stuff musically where, you know, your creativity can just expand. So anyway, I'm gone. Appreciate you. Blessings. Peace.